Welcome and good morning. Uh, this is the Reproducible Builds team talking about stretching out towards trustworthy computing. Um, so yeah, we're far on stage, uh, but actually this is a team effort. Uh, all these people listed here have contributed to the project at one point. Uh, we're on like the four of us. So that's Luna, me, Dev, Dole, Chris Lam, Lemby, and Holger. Uh, but actually, this is DevConf, and so a lot more of us have been or are currently here. And so if you want to thank anybody to what, that is working on this, you, you need to actually thank all these folks. Because, yay. Uh, the, people, the people in blue are here. So. <laughs> um, let's get started. So, um, quick quick cap on what we're talking about. Uh, so, we have software. Uh, it's made for source. Source is readable by humans, or at least a good amount of humans. Uh, in this room, it's, it's good. Uh, binary, reading, readable by computer, and some tiny fraction of humanity. Uh, and going from source to binary, it's called build, or like building or compiling. Uh, and we are doing free software, and free software is awesome because, well, we can actually run these binaries uh, like we want, and we can actually study uh, the, soft the software, uh, how it's been made by studying the source. And by studying the source, we can assess that it does what it's supposed to do and not something else that has not, like, have malware or Trojans or, like, security bugs. Um, and so we have the binary that can be used, fine. We have the source that can be verified. Uh, problem is that right now, the only way we, we know that a binary that we get has been, we, we have to trust like a website or like a Debian repository that says, well, this binary has been made with this source. But there's no way we can actually prove that. And well, this is actually a problem uh, that's been um, well explained by Mike Perry and Seth Schoen at the 31C3 uh, in, in Hamburg last December. And for example, Seth Schoen, he made a um, proof of concept uh, exploit. Uh, for the Linux kernel, that when uh, GCC was called, um, the kernel will, without modifying anything, anything on the disk, when, when, when the kernel detects that GCC is, is going to uh, read a, a C file, it will insert some extra lines of code. And these line of codes can actually uh, be a very bad thing. In the case of the 31C3 talk, it was just recalling. But um, so actually, you can have you can even have like developers who are in very good faith, who like have totally secured their machine, or they thought they have, uh, who have like reviewed all their source codes for any bugs, and well, we would still get totally honed as soon as their computer gets compromised or one of the build demons from Debian gets compromised, for example. Um, and well, this is not like hypothetical threats here uh, we're discussing. A couple of months after Seth and, and Mike uh, spoke at, at 31C3, uh, The Intercept revealed from the Snowden leaks that uh, at a CIA conference in um, 2012, there was uh, one of the talks that happened was about a project called Straw Horse. And Straw Horse is about modifying Apple Xcode, which is the uh, um, development environment for, for Mac OS X and, uh, and iOS applications. And while they were modifying Xcode, so it will produce, without the developer knowing, uh, uh, binaries with Trojans, malware, uh, uh, modern Mac binaries, lots of bad things. So, solution enable anyone to reproduce identical binary packages from a given source. Because if using a source, using a uh, the same environment, uh, multiple people on different computers, on different networks, at different times, can all get the same thing from the same source, all the same binary, byte for byte, uh, then there's a good chance that, well, everybody could, get, could be owned. But Let's, let's be more like, like uh, joyful and say that probably if everybody gets the same result, they will actually, there was no problem. And 
uh, everybody is safe. And we call that solution reproducible builds. <coughs> Yay. Um, go on. So it, actually, it's not only about security. Uh, for Debian, we have, uh, if you're doing multi arc same packages, well, they all need to have the same bytes if they are built in, in from, um, for different architectures, uh, the, the files in the, in the package. Um, debug packages, you can create them at a later time, like if you forgot to have the debug packages in the first place. And while well, you can pass the no strip option later, and you will get, because the package is reproducible, you will get the debug symbols that work for software that has been shipped already. Uh, we do early detection of fail to build from source that way, because if, if we try pretty quickly to reproduce a build, then it has to work. Um, it's useful for build profiles. Um, we can get smaller .deb deltas, uh, because from one version to the next, we might have the same content. Um, we, do val we can do validation of cross builds. Uh, Helmut Grun is, can, can talk to you about that. Uh, and also, um, Neil Tire uh, was told me that he was very interested in reproducible builds because uh, it will enable him to test the developer better. Because you can, if the package builds reproducibly, then when he makes a change to developer, he can rebuild the package and you were like the same version of a package with a newer developer and see what has changed. And this change can be isolated to only what he has worked on developer, for example, or anybody else. Um, and, oh my, the whole world is watching us. Since, since uh, quite like two years, a year and a half, everybody I meet in security conference, in hacker conference, in free software conference is like, oh, are you working on that? That's awesome. Uh, and I mean, I've been the one doing quite a lot of talks and uh, so everybody comes to me and I'm like, whoa, this is way more, way bigger, but uh, we're actually leading uh, the field here. And yay, Debian. So we are not the only ones leading the field, Bitcoin and Tor made their software reproducible before us. Coreboot also succeeded. If you build Coreboot without any payloads, it's 100% reproducible. FreeBSD has a page on their wiki since 2013 saying there's five bugs in the basis, uh, five reproducibility issues in the base system. And we are in the moment um, trying to confirm this. So on this Jenkins Debian net, I've also set up now tests for FreeBSD, NetBSD, Coreboot, and OpenWRT. So if you go to reproducible Debian net slash these projects, you get that tested. Um, and there's more in the pipeline. So there's um, other projects are interested as well. <coughs> Net NetBSD also has a variable MK repro, which you can set and then it builds reproducibly. Though they think um, keeping some timestamps is fine and then filtering them out later. We disagree. Um, so this is how Debian looks like, Debian SID. But this is a lie. This is not the truth. This is just our test setup. SID is not like this. For SID, it's all orange. There's zero reproducibility in SID today. And we are what we'll talk now and in the following round table is to actually create, make SID reproducible. So the current status is um, we are working on this in Debian since two years. Um, we have weekly reports about our projects now since May. And we've given several talks, um, and especially in the last year. And all these talks, presentation, also other stuff is linked in the wiki. There's an about page with information about Debian, these BSDs, other Linuxes, um, upstream software, it's all on this wiki. Um, so since DEPCON 14, which is m merely a year ago, we've co made quite some changes. Um, we have introduced stripped non-determinism, which will um, Take, it's called by the by DH after after the at the end of the build of the package and will normalize some things, which will Dole let it, no you will Chris will explain later. Um, we have we decided on a fixed build pass because the build pass is leaked in the binaries and in several things. So we didn't find a way yet to make the build pass arbitrary. Um, 
we desi designed a way to record the build environment because to rebuilding um, you need to um, recreate the build environment. Um, we set up this Jenkins setup. Um, we have wrote we wrote Diffoscope, which used to be called Debindiv, which shows differences between two packages or two directories or two file systems by now. Um, there's source date epoch, which is a way um, that the tools expose the last, day, last modification of the source because the, the build date, people want to include the build date often because they think this is a meaningful indication when a build was done or which software is used. But if the build is al always recreates the same result, the build date becomes meaningless, and the really interesting thing is the last modification of the source. And we've written patches for the um, tools. So, so stripped on this uh, Is Andrew Ayer in the audience? Yay! Yay. So he did it. Um, it's it's um, simple Perl. Uh, it's written in Perl because we didn't want to add a new uh, uh, build dependency on all Debian packages. Uh, but basically, it takes anything and try to normalize it as much as it can. So replacing uh, timestamp or like file permissions or removing some uh, issues. It's it's uh, it's working very well on, on many formats. It's made to be extensible, so we can add actually more things. Uh, and it's actually run by GH at the end of the process, as Holger said. Um, so the build info, um, it's currently like a proposal. We have not yet uh, entirely agreed, but we're generating them as part of the uh, tests we have. And basically it's a file, it's a new uh, control file that will tie the, in, the same, so in the same file the sources, the generate binary, uh, the package that we'll use to build this binary and their version. And the idea is that we can use this file to uh, reinstall all these specific versions from Snapshot. So we create the same build environment. And then uh, we can just start the build from that source that was mentioned and uh, see if the binary that's been generated matches. Uh, match. And so that's what it looks like for now. So you see there is a source binary, the build path, because uh, currently we don't have any good pro pro past processing tool for build path in elf and dwarf binaries, so we just decided to use the same, to specify the build path if so when we do fulfill um, later we build, we can use that path and be safe. Uh, so the source, it's the DSC, the dead binaries is .deb, and a list of packages with version. Um, we currently use the base file uh, version to know which uh, Debian like stable release is to be used as the basis. Um, yeah. So what the, the general procedure for testing is um, we build the source, um, we save the results, we, build it, we modify the environment and we build it again and compare the result. And that started with a shell script in last year, which I put on Jenkins, and then it exploded a bit. And now we have 67 Jenkins jobs running on seven hosts. Um, since the last week, we have four ARMHF small boards, so we can, will be able to test ARMHF, but very slowly. We have two new um, AMD64 build nodes. The code is now split into Python and Bash scripts. There's for this, for all the other distro testing, there's a lot of bash code now, which is mostly boilerplate, and it's actually five lines or something to build FreeBSD, and five lines to build NetBSD, but there's 100 lines boiler code around, so it's really not that much code. Um, we do test testing unstable and experimental. Um, for ARM, we will only start with unstable, because we do lack hardware, so if you have hardware to, um, to donate, donate to us, that would be great. We need SSH in and root, basically. Um, we are, as I said, we are testing um, core boot, OpenWRT, and the BSDs. Soon I will also set up Fedora tests. I don't want to test all the 20,000 Fedora packages, but just 200 or something, the base system of Fedora, to examine how RPM works, um, to get really the whole free software world reproducible. And this is all run on ProfitBricks hardware since 2012, so thanks to ProfitBricks for that. And this is the variations we 
do for Debian. Um, so it's the, ho the host name, the username, the time zone, the locale. Um, Chris will explain how this, what modification this causes. Variances, we're not testing at the moment differences in date. So the date is always the same, the time is a bit different. Well, almost. Because we cheat with the time zone because we use one time zone that is like GMT minus 14 and then GMT plus 12. And so it's more than 24 hours apart. And there's on the first of the months, we sometimes find new bugs where there's packages which record the months. Um, and we don't have variations of the CPU type at the moment, but uh, this, that both time and CPU type variations we'll have in about one or two weeks. The nodes are being prepared at the moment. Um, and then we will test more, all the meaningful variations we could think of. There will be probably some packages which be different according to the number of CD drives attached or whatever things, but those will be fined by you. <laughs> and so we're doing all these tests because we want when you rebuild a package on your machine that if any of these is different from the build demons of Debian, you get the same result. And we, want, you use, we use this to detect these problems early before you actually make a false positive that we have to investigate when uh, someone rebuilds a package on their machine. Uh, to understand actually the, the difference what we found from, from uh, one build to the other, we, uh, so it started like also as a 10 lines shell script, and then it felt like a cage, and so Python, and now it's a lot of code, and it actually grew uh, way beyond just Debian package, and we changed the name, it was called Debian Diff, but it's absolutely not tied to Debian anymore at all, so it's called Diffoscope. Uh, thanks to Slam for the name, and basically what it does, it tries to get to the bottom of what is different between two archives or directories. Um, because it's not useful to compare bytes uh, that are compressed by gzip or xz, that will not leave you to understand what, what is different. You need to uncompress and look at the uncompressed data. And if the thing that actually compressed is a tarball, well, you might actually want to compare the files inside the tarball. And if there are like a, a PDF inside this archive, well, you actually don't want to compare the bytes of the PDF, you want to compare the text of the PDF. So this is basically what uh, Diffoscope does, is it tries to transform anything that is uh, a container and compare things in, that, in, that con in these containers. And if they are like, uh, can be transformed into human readable form, it will try to do that and compare these human readable forms. And if it doesn't find any difference, but there's still difference from the byte, it will fall back to uh, binary comparison. Um, try it, uh, extend it, it's Python, it's smaller, uh, it's great. Uh, it already supports like SquashFS and ISO and RPM and get text, uh, ML files and so many different things. Uh, you can have uh, okay. HTML output like that. So this is what is displayed on, on many examples we've shown so far and also to make it easier for copy-paste and uh, pass processing, we have the uh, text output. Um, you can also use it to review packages before uploading them to Debian. Uh, it does fuzzy matching, so even if the directory is different in an archive, it will like find, like, a little bit like Git does. Uh, and so it's, it's way, it's written way more beyond just like build reproducibility, useful tool, yeah. So in order to solve uh, timestamp issues, we are proposing uh, the source date epoch variable. Uh, this is because most of the times having the build date embedded in a package is not useful for the user because you could take a really old package, build it today, and that day will not, do, will not be useful. Um, so we are standardizing a replacement for build dates so that tools can use it. And uh, when this value is set, the tool instead of uh, embedding the current date, it will embed the date taken from source date epoch, which will contain a Unix epoch timestamp. Uh, this is a general solution we're trying to uh, standardize so that not only Debian uses, but uses it, but other free software projects and, and distributions. And in the case of Debian, we set this variable to the latest Debian changelog entry timestamp. And we have already been uh, 
sending patches to different packages. Mostly it's uh, documentation generations. So here's a list of uh, bugs we have opened, which are which have been closed and uh, merged. So it's help to mine epidoc, ghost script, text it to HTML and Sphinx. We are both sending these patches to Debian and upstream so that all the distributions can uh, make can use them and and we have also been sending patches to other uh, packages which are still open so we encourage you to take a look at these packages if you are the maintainer and merge the the patch so thanks thanks uh, uh, Daniel Kangimo and, and Shiminlo for pushing this proposal forward and also like a lot of these patches have been written by Acura and Vol as part of their Google sum of code and it worked really great. The GCC? Yeah. Well, he wrote the GCC one. Yeah, the GCC patches, uh, GCC uses two macro macros, which are date and time, which embed the timestamp. And uh, I wrote a patch so that uh, if source date epoch is uh, set, instead of adding the current time, it takes the time from that variable. I send this patch to, the, to GCC. Um, it's still there, forgotten with many other patches, but hopefully at some point they will realize that this is interesting and they will merge it. So, Chris, you won. <coughs> hey. Um, <coughs> so, I'd like to run you through some, uh, very quickly run you through some very simple um, ways of fixing packages. The details don't necessarily matter. It's just to give you a good idea of like what needs to be changed and basically to point out that it's not rocket science. So you can oh. just come in and jump in. So for example, um, gzip, um, it's a very old tool and they decided to add timestamps when you generate it. But it's an easy fix. You just add dash n flag. <laughs> Um, some other things are quite <coughs> easy to change. Um, some Python stuff had tag date true, which uh, I don't know if you can see it, but adds a timestamp to eggs. You just change it to false or get rid of it. Um, static libraries, you they are just AR archives, so you, the, the same format as .deb, and you can just use bin utils or our strip non-determinism tool. Uh, ping has timestamps for some reason. You can get rid of them. Uh, that's image magic. Uh, it's a bit ugly. Um, but also, strip non determinism will get rid of it. Uh, tarballs are quite interesting. So they will, by default, capture um, user and group. Um, you just pass owner root, blah, 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 blah. Um, ordering, this is interesting as well. So it'll usually just use file system ordering, which is com just completely non deterministic. So you need to sort LC all. Um, oh, wait, go back. Think about the local, because sorting order vary from local to the next. Quite, yeah, mm. that's fun. Um, it also takes timestamps. Again, you can set M time, or you can muck around with find X, R, T, and blah, blah, blah. Um, load of other files have timestamps, Erlang, files for no reason, even upstream don't know why they added a timestamp. <laughs> uh, yeah, because, yeah. Uh, so we use source, uh, now have a patch for source date epoch, which I think landed a couple of days ago, which is great. Um, here's an interesting one, not necessarily the current build timestamp, so, um, <laughs> so this is a time zone dependent date which Ruby loads and then saves incorrectly as your local time. Well, anyway, it just gets commangled. So that's patching. So I'm, going, I'm kind of going from changing individual packages to more tool, tool chainy type things, as you can see. Um, upstream configure scripts. Uh, you can maybe see at the top that it just uses host name for no real reason. <laughs> Sometimes you can override in Debian, ru Debian rules just by exporting something or passing a variable to, you know, DH auto build or whatever. So that's just a little bit more involved and you have to look at them a bit more carefully. Perl hash order, yeah, Perl, a lot of Perl uses data dumper to just output a bunch of stuff, which is just non deterministic. Um, so often just setting sort keys, uh, but sometimes it's a completely different solution. Um, header files, so you can maybe see that they're using the timestamp essentially as a unique identifier. Uh, you 
probably have to start rewriting these using something saner, or because it's just wrong to use the timestamp anyway. It just, just kind of sucks. Um, again, more make files. The mean the the deeper the uh, timestamp in the upstream package, the more you have to start patching. So these kind of start sucking a little. Um, yeah. So we've made a lot of tooltone changes. Some were already mentioned. Some of them already merged. You can see more at this link. Again, details don't matter. Just check it out. It isn't crazy. It's just just working out what's different. Yeah. Um, in terms of the work done, we've sent these many patches, two patches a day. Which is not too bad, on average. Um, and that's 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 <laughs> 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 I can clap because I've sent three or something like that. So three per day. <laughs> Hogger does three per day. <laughs> uh, and this doesn't count um, other pack just bugs we found in the process of building packages, like fail to build and stuff like that. Um, this is. Blue, well, you can see in the key. Blue is the ones we opened and ones we've done. So you can see that someone went a bit crazy in February filing bugs, d and eventually, <laughs> <laughs> eventually they're all being fixed slowly, and slowly, and slowly. That's really good. And actually, the, the we filed more bugs because these bugs, the fails to build from source bugs, are excluded. I think we filed 300 fails to build from source bugs in the last two or three months. Mm -hmm. So and we no, did. Yeah. Include and those here. include fail to build because of reproducibility things as well, but we haven't split them up. So, blah, blah, blah. anyway, great. So next, um, what's what's left to be done? Because I said, or Holger said, uh, the cake is no, the graph is a lie. Uh, and so, while there are issues, the main the main thing that is blocking uh, uh, a lot of work is 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 uh, GPKG. Um, right now, it, the output of GPKG is will be non-deterministic 100% of the time uh, because of timestamps uh, and uh, at least uh, the file ordering. Um, we also have a patch that creates these uh, build info files that we've shown that works. Uh, it, we, we need to, it's not submitted yet to the BGS because we need to agree on the format. At least with FTP master or maybe DPKG. Well, we have a lot of people, and that's what we're going to do uh, the next hour. Uh, developer also has a few uh, changes. The uh, make end times uh, might also not be, uh, developer might not also be the best place. Maybe we want that in DPKG. Uh, I've been trying to put patches in tar so we can make it easier. It's, it's complicated to see where's the best place, but so far we've been doing this te our test with. Uh, this frame and it worked. This, this in our repository we have these bug pa pa packages with these bugs fixed. So when you want to test reproducibility issues on your own machine, you need to use the repository which has these patches applied at the moment. So pure set, you cannot create reproducible packages. So also, I heard that the source that epoch uh, um, patch is in Git already, so it's going to happen. Uh, CDBS also needed to export that source that epoch, uh, and we are starting to do more also infrastructure work. Uh, Josh uh, mainly on S and Acura on S build, uh, which are um, because we want to have this S rebuild script where you take you give it a build info and we'll do the rebuild, and it needs changes in uh, build daemon for the build path and and also like a couple of changes in L build in S build itself. Again, the script is not ready yet. This finishing means we, it uses our repository at the moment, and we won't need to change it to only use sit and snapshot. So there is the, uh, the builder issue uh, that we need to discuss. Uh, and we also need to see how we could include or not, or somewhere uh, give this build info control file to the world so they can rebuild the packages. So it's not yet clear where is the best place to store them. Because uh, well, adding 22,000 files, some, some people get cranky about the idea. It's more than 22,000 files. It's 22,000 source packages multiplied by 10 architectures, but there's a lot of arch, arch, arch builds, so probably that's 100,000 build info files um, multiplied with stretch and sits. It's 200,000 files on more on the file servers and on the mirrors we would like to have it. That's the same amount of files which are currently there. The mirror operators are not happy. They will not take it. So our current idea is now to just concat all these files into one file that's 140 megabyte uncompressed, 40 megabyte compressed, 
that's easier to handle, and then probably have a service built in for Debian org where you can download individual built info files if you need them. And so when we be build done with all, we, we, we will be done with all that, we can maybe add a final patch. We would be to uh, Debian policy, meaning that Debian packages be reproducible. Um, yeah, why not? Huh? My, so I can, I can say that dream again. My dream again of mine is that we would stop uploading .deb uh, when we upload a package, but instead just upload the hash of the binary, have the build day, build again this package, and only if these two matches, they can enter the archive. So we are sure, and we are at least sure that two machine, the developer machine and the build daemon, agrees that they've built the same thing. So. Wait, wait, wait. But first, I, I share this dream, but I think having this in policy as a must requirement is sadly something only for stretch plus one. Yeah. Um, but I'm curious Checking. what. What you were, if, if we had fixed deep, deep, deep package and dep helper now, would you think we should upgrade all these wishlist bugs to important now? Yeah. So make yeah. what? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> we'll talk about this later soon. So, but before that, we actually have work to do. Uh, so. So in order to fix your package, uh, the first thing you can do is go to reproducible.debian.net slash the name of your package, and you can see uh, the web interface when you can, where you can see notes on the package. We have tags to identify different issues that make package not reproducible with links to the wiki about how to solve them. Um, um, Oh. When you see this, you want to click on this debindiv link. It's still called debindiv, not diffoscope. This will show the differences. If there is a node, if there's not an, if the package is unreproducible and there's no node, it will automatically display the debindiv. And if your package is fine, there's here a sun. Ah, sorry. Uh, you can also see an entry in the tracker. Uh, stating if your package is reproducible or not. And you can also find information in the DPO and, and DMD. You can find tips on the wiki. Uh, it's the reproducible builds wiki. Uh, we are working on a how-to to have a detailed, uh, detailed steps on different issues and how to solve them. Uh, Lunar gave a talk in, in CC Camp where there's uh, many issues really, uh, really well explained and the solutions for them. And you can also come to the, our IRC channel, which is Debian Reproducible, and ask for help, or go to the mailing list. So in order to test if, mm, locally if your uh, package is reproducible, uh, right now we are using a script that uses pbuilder in a custom com configuration. Um, you need to set up a our reproducible repository. There's uh, in the how to in the wiki, there's uh, the steps on how to set up the ch root and everything. The, it's documented in the wiki. And uh, default scope is uh, in stable, and today it's going in stretch. Uh, we plan to add uh, these scripts to rebuild packages in, in different settings in depth scripts once the PKG is good. And uh, we um, we welcome you tomorrow to the hacking session at uh, from uh, two to seven in the Stock Stockholm room. And so uh, the the that's for fixing your package. Please do that. If you want to have even more fun than just your own package, join us. Um, the th this is the past year of my life has been awesome because the team has been so great. It's been friendly atmosphere. Uh, lots of new understanding so many things you didn't want to learn about that you had to learn about. Um, and basically, it's like it feels very good to be part of this actual changing the world thing. Uh, OK, it's just software, but it's still like, you know, it, it has some profound effect. Uh, I've been told that the work we've been doing is like being tossed around in like Cisco and 
uh, Google and Facebook, like all these big dot-com companies, blah, 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 they'll actually want to do that as well, even if they're not doing free software, which I find weird, but whatever. Um, so what do we do? Well, like we review uh, packages, like we have these notes when we actually try to identify, so when maintainer comes, they don't have to uh, think too much about the problem and just fix it. Uh, we uh, try to identify common trends, uh, so when many packages have the same problem, that we make an entry and explain, and maybe think about fixes that could apply to the whole archive. Uh, we work on this reproducible.debian.net Jenkins setup, uh, the scripts. Uh, we hack on the Defoscope tool. We make script on the system better. Um, we propose change for the tool chains uh, when there are needs. Submit all our patches. Uh, almost all the bugs we have submitted are been um, on individual patches. Well, no, sorry. Some, most of the bugs we have reported on individual patches have bug uh, patches. Meh. Whatever. <laughs> you, you most got the, yeah, bugs yeah. have patches. Yes. <laughs> and also, we are actually uh, writing some more general documentation from the understanding and experience we, we have been having. We are uh, preparing uh, reproducible builds how to, to explain uh, to the whole free software world how they can do it. So it's about uh, some of what Chris explained, but also more general consideration on what if you're not Debian and you want your thing reproducible when you distribute as an independent vendor. And so we want to ha actually work on reference documentation so the whole world can actually uh, do that. Um, and we do a lot of talks, as you've seen, and it's been fun, and we all these uh, presentation we've made so far, it's uh, all in Git, and everybody is free to take one of these slides, decks, and run with it somewhere. Uh, translate it, do that, you know. And, yeah, questions? Uh, we have to run with the microphone, because there's no mic anymore. Uh, okay. Wait. Uh, uh, you first. You first? Okay. So uh, I just wanted to make two quick comments. So first of all, Diffoscope is really awesome, not only for reproducibility, but also, so for example, if you change your Debian rules in some way and want to see if the package is the same afterwards because you just clean up a bit, that's really awesome for that. Mm -hmm. So thank you. And also, I think this is something, the work you're doing now is something that in 20 years' time we're going to look back towards it and think, well, of course builds should be reproducible. So. Thank you very much yeah. for your work. Uh, when um, reproducibility becomes or will become part of the Debian policy, uh, will there be a Lintian mi minus minus reproducible? I don't think Lintian can detect that because Lintian works on the source package and you need to build the package for this. I mean, things that could be detected at, by Lintian, as in from a static analysis point of view, I'm sure, like looking for gzip without n, for example, but it would never be conclusive from well, Lintian's point of view. One thing that I really wanted to add to Diffoscope at some point, the, the code is made the way that is possible, is to add hints. So when it actually looks up differences between two packages, then you have uh, it can like have an idea to also, or, like suggest you, hey, you need to remove that timestamps, or oh, you should sort these keys. Uh, it's not done yet, but if anybody wants to uh, do patches, it's totally doable. Hi, John, everyone. Uh, thank you for the work. And have you thought about reproducible images? It's on the to-do list. <laughs> before, so very good. Before. Yeah. Before images, you need reproducible package installation, and then you need reproducible images, like SquashFS has some things which are not reproducible, but the package installation is not reproducible at the moment because up installs packages with an arbitrary order, and then the post ins create, for example, users, which get user IDs in the order the packages are installed. So for that to fix, either up needs to, up needs to have a way to install it in a de deterministic order. But it's on the list, it's in the to-do file. So, Pat started a wiki page uh, a couple of months ago that's called like, Reproducible Install. Uh, this is very important if we want tools like uh, Tails 
uh, to actually be reproducible. So we, we, we will, I mean, some people will work on that. I would do want to work on that at some point. It's quite a deep problem. For example, DI will install different stuff depending on your hardware. So that's immediately not reproducible. So, yeah, but it'd be great. Good question. Um, so I've been working on a couple of my packages to get them reproducible built, but I was yeah. uh, often wondering um, if I should fix it in my package or actually that it should be fixed in uh, a package higher up. And I guess I've been adding some uh, fixes to my package which may in the future not even be uh, needed anymore and then it's just uh, code, unnecessary code as well. So how do you see where things should be fixed, then how should we as package maintainers go about with this? There's many things which, which there's the easy fix to whatever set the time zone in dev helper or better in dpackage to um, UTC, but that will not fix the upstream bugs. So actually it's, it's be not better not to fix a separate time zone or other things deterministic in these tools, but rather um, have them fixed upstream. That's what we want. It might be what some things we will need to fix in depth package to get a meaningful result, but basically we want rather there's distributions which just build from source which don't have Debian rules, and they just build with the upstream make file. So we want the fixes to land there. We, 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 one we, we, we've been experimenting for two years, and this is a lot of trial and errors. You know, trying something, see how it feels, oh, maybe we can do better than that, and changing. And I know this can be frustrating at some point because you do changes and all, they all become unneeded, but in the end, this is how we, we, we make stuff that matters. It's because we are not trying to, and we move forward. It's not because we're trying to make the big pillar at once. And I know in Debian, sometimes we try to do that. And so we experiment and, and learn from it. Yeah, yeah. An example uh, that I'm now looking into is actually that uh, the documentation is built uh, for this package by looking in all the files and, and generating. But for instance, the index file is sorted. Mm. But I guess upstream would say, well, if you set some uh, ordering in your LC parameters, you want this page to be ordered as you want instead of forcing it in the source. So I'm really wondering, should I now upstream this or should I just fix it in my rules because that's the logical place? Both. No, that's no good answer. Uh, I mean, the so uh, I'm 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 f a f a quite a strong proponent on the idea that if you use a, comp a computer, you should be able to talk to your, and have the computer talk to you in your own language a language that you choose. So if people want to have uh, GCC error messages in 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 German, they should have it. Uh, so I'm but local sorting. This is the kind of LCO. Uh, that can be very local and that you can do uh, for just one tool, it, it's fine to do that. Do you have ideas on making sources reproducible, like upstreams calling make disk or these infamous autogen.sh files? I, I, no, no, I don't think that anybody in the team has looked into that yet. Uh, source. Sources is, is, source files are, are easy to uh, analyze, way more than binary packages. So it's, it would still be great to have easier ways to have uh, source tables uh, be byte for byte identical, but it's not as uh, an issue as it, it is for binaries. But if people want to look in that, they should, yeah. So, uh, do you know a way to make Git archive build something reproducible? Well, Pristin tar. Yes, but without it. <laughs> There's one tool you want to use a new one and write it. <laughs> Why not use that tool which does the job? Pristin tar does it. Well, we. I mean, this is, this is, again, this is like for source, and so that's another issue that what we're actually currently working on. We You're welcome to join the team and extend our scope to sources. Yay. Uh, two, two, how many questions? Two? Two, two more questions, two, two or three, yeah. So, if there is a, a couple of other environment v v 
variables that could be be set in the environment to increase repeatability, where to put them in the rules file or in uh, in the generic build environment of all packages, or where should these things be placed? Well. It'd be nice if upstream fixed it. So if we just changed it in Debian rules, that's just uh, only helping us. So um, often talking to upstream will be like the, the ideal solution. Are you referring to something else or maybe? Well, um, for example, many hash maps have randomized data in the hash functions. So if you have some code that relies on hash order, uh, at least some Im implementations of hash functions are letting them be seeded from the outside rather than using uh, something random for a build thing. But you want the ha randomness mm. in your hash functions for normal users because else your hash maps get filled with uh, or is open to attacks. Correct, yeah. Uh, I mean, so, uh, we, so we, we in that in these cases we add we we send patches uh, adding sort everywhere for the okay. keys and it solved it. Okay. For for very few cases we for Perl for example you can set an environment variable and some maintainers prefer to do that, uh, but usually we try to push these changes to upstream because they're simple enough and they like it because it makes it actually makes testing easier then. Uh, there was one in the back there. Last question. Um, That's the last question. A follow-up question to what we had here uh, before. Um, you showed uh, an open bug report against GCC to um, support source epoch date mm -hmm. um, to cover the to cover the um, M date and um, M time timestamps. Um, so I have patches to patch them out in my pack, uh, packages. Shall I remove the, those patches and if so, when? The, the, have you seen any more emails from the GCC maintainers? No. Talk to the microphone. So the mail is forgotten. I guess we should ping it again and see if they reply. Because what I read from the GCC um, uh, website is that only the replies from contributors are the one that matters, and I think I mean the maintainers. And no maintainer replied to the message, so we should ping again and see. Well, that was just a, an example. My question was more general. At which time shall I remove my patches to fix things which were fixed? higher up in the tool chain, or shall I just leave them in there? Once they are in suit. Okay, thanks. Okay, I guess we're out of time. Sure. Thank you for listening. Thank you. <laughs> Fix your packages. <laughs>